What's going on? Steve here with IBC Global. In this video, I am going to talk about why people are interested in whole life insurance, specifically for the cash value. And at the end of this video, I'll talk about how you can work with us if you're interested in a whole life insurance policy, specifically for the cash value. So I'll talk about three things in this video. First, we'll, we'll discuss the main benefits of the cash value of a whole life insurance product. And this will really describe the why, as in why people are interested in the cash value of a whole life insurance policy. Second, we'll talk about how to maximize the cash value in a whole life insurance policy. This is the most important piece, in my opinion, maximizing the cash value, because if you're interested in a whole life insurance policy, specifically for the cash value, what I'll say is that if it's not maximized, that is likely going to create a situation where you have buyer's remorse because you find out the product could have been set up for more cash value from day one, but it wasn't for whatever reason. And then three, we'll talk about how you can use the policy. And this part will be pretty cool. I will go through an example of how people use it. We'll look at an actual life insurance illustration with taking money out, putting it back in. You'll see that it works a lot like a personal line of credit. It'll be fun to go through that example. So. Mind if I show you? Let's have some fun. We'll start with the main benefits. So first I've got a question. When you hear the word whole life insurance, what have you heard about it? Have you heard more good things or more bad things? Here's what most people have heard. Bad things. That it's a bad product or a horrible place to put money. It's expensive. The cash value has weak returns or you're way better off buying, buying term and investing the rest. But then at the same time, what some people have heard is that wealthy individuals have a ton of cash value life insurance. Corporations have it. Banks have a ton of cash value life insurance. In fact, if you were to look at Bank of America, they've got the most. Their current cash value holdings as of the last quarter of 2023 are a little over $24 billion. <laughs> That's in cash value. The death benefit amounts are even higher than that. So people often see and hear this, and the follow-up question is why? Why do they, these three individuals or wealthy individuals and corporations, have so much money in cash value life insurance, while at the same time I hear that it is just a horrible place to put money? Really, what do they know that I don't know? So here's why they use whole life insurance. Every single time, it has to do with the cash value. Often what we hear expressed with, ex with respect to the cash value is that it's viewed as a safe place one can put money that can be accessed like a personal line of credit and has some really nice tax benefits. In summary, the main benefits of the cash value is that it's a safe, liquid, and tax-free area to position money. So next, we've got our beautiful whole life insurance chart up. And you'll see three different colors there. Death benefit in blue, premium and PUA rider in red, and then cash value in green. Let's start with the death benefit. So the death benefit on a whole life insurance policy will typically gradually increase over time. When you pass or when you die, the death benefit is paid out 100% income tax-free to your beneficiaries. Next, we've got your premium and PUA rider. PUA stands for paid up additions. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. But these two areas are how you get money into a life insurance policy. This, this would be money you deposit through both the premium and PUA rider. Now here's the thing when it comes to depositing money into a whole life insurance policy. You can set it up where you pay into it forever, like a whole life insurance policy where you pay into it for your whole life or you can set it up where you fund it for a short period of time. It can be as short as two or three years. Maybe it's 10 years. Maybe you adjust as you go. My point is you can set it up to be very, very flexible, which is nice. And then last, you've got your cash value. So the cash value is really what people are interested in. And when you look at the cash value of a whole life insurance policy, it'll continue to compound every single year. There's no risk. You've got strong guarantees and you can also access the money anytime you'd like. So let's talk a, talk a little bit more about the safety. So the cash value is safe. What do I mean when I say that? Well, first, there's no risk. What I mean when I say that is that your money is not invested in the stock market at all. You've got a guaranteed rate 
that typically ranges between 2 and 4%. This depends on the company and product you select, and the guaranteed rate is your minimum floor. However, an insurance company will usually pay more than the minimum guarantee, and this is the total dividend interest rate. You'll see with the top companies, dividend rates for 2023 range between 5 and about 6%. And a quick side note, dividend rates are always, always gross rates. And what I mean when I say that is if you have $100,000 in cash value and the dividend rate is 6%, common sense would tell you and I that 6% of $100,000 is what? $6,000. You won't see your policy grow by that much. It'll be, a, it'll be a little bit less depending on the year. It could be a lot less, but we'll go through the actual growth of a policy in a little bit. Typically, you'll see the net growth rate in a whole life insurance policy falls somewhere between three to 5%. Could be a little bit higher than that, but that growth rate really depends strongly on if the policy is set up correctly, and then if we choose the right insurance company. This is so important, this piece being insurance company selection. So, which life insurance company should I choose? The short answer is, copy what the wealthy do and copy what corporations do. The technical answer is, or the detailed answer is, we would recommend at least considering one of the four major mutual companies that you see up on the screen. Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual. The main reason why is because we've seen a proven track record of strong actual performance, not just illustrations or projections. And this, is actually a big, big problem in the life insurance industry. What I mean when I say that is that illustrations can often overpromise, meaning you feel like they're telling you you're going to have a million dollars long term, and then they under deliver, under deliver. So to illustrate, pretend that you're in the market for an electric car, and your biggest concern is battery life. So you come to me and say, I want an electric car, battery life is my concern. I say, hey, I've got two fantastic options for you. Option one is a Tesla. The battery is proven to last for at least 10 years. Option two is a smaller company you have not heard of. However, they claim that their battery will last for 15 years. Both options cost you $100,000. So both cars cost exactly the same. You pick option two. You go with the smaller company that you give me pretending on the smaller company, $100,000, because you feel like you're getting more value. The battery lasts for 15 years, that was the claim. Here's the big problem. The battery dies after six years. You go back and look at the, the sales agreement and the disclaimer reads, when you bought the car, the disclaimer reads that battery life is not guaranteed. And you feel like this. Here's the thing, this happens with whole life insurance. You might be shown an illustration that projects a million dollars in cash value at a certain point in time, but at that point in time, the actual cash value hits only $600,000. When you look into the illustration and in your contract, you see that the illustration reads non-guarantee. And then you feel like this, which we don't want you to feel like this. No one wants to feel like this. So how do you get things right with a whole life insurance policy? Here's how I would look at it. Number one, I don't want a company and product that might deliver strong results. What I want is what banks, corporations, and the wealthy have. For example, there's a bank we work with, it's our company's largest client, and they've got life insurance policies, cash value life insurance policies with three different companies, Mass Mutual, Guardian, and New York Life three of the four major mutual companies. The fourth major mutual company is Northwestern Mutual. And just a full disclaimer or full disclosure, Northwestern Mutual does not work with independent brokers. They only work with career agents. So that's why we did not place Northwestern Mutual because we can't as we remain an independent broker. So the four major mutual companies, they've provided proof of performance, meaning we have real policies that have lived the test of time, we've seen strong results and we're comfortable putting our money there and recommending others do as well because the proof is there. It's not just an illustration that looks good. So an illustration with a smaller company might look good, but if the proof isn't there, 
we're definitely going to discuss that with you. We want to make sure that you've got full transparency around what's seen and then what is likely to actually happen. So here is some dividend history with two of the four major mutual companies. Let's get my big head out of the way so you can see the 2023 dividend rate with Mass Mutual. And again, we primarily work with the four major mutual companies with a proven dividend history, but more so proven actual performance, which goes beyond dividend rates. So that touches on the safety. Next, let's talk about the liquidity. So accessing the cash value here is a piece everyone is interested in so you can access your cash value anytime in a whole life insurance policy typically as early as 10 business days now you can access your money through an online portal your mobile app or you can reach directly out to us and we can help you with the paperwork and facilitate the loan with the insurance company so it's a smooth process you typically receive your money in two to five business days the maximum amount you can access through a loan is usually about 95% of your cash value. And here's the part that everyone likes at the bottom. Your cash value keeps on compounding when you take out policy loans. We'll look at an example of that in a little bit. The last main benefit, tax-free. So you can access your cash value completely tax-free if it's done so correctly. Now. I emphasize the word if done so correctly, but don't worry. <laughs> it's easy to access the cash value tax-free as long as we do everything right. We always like to say if done so correctly because it is possible to run into a taxable event on the cash value with a life insurance policy. A couple examples are below. One is a modified endowment contract. The short name for that is a MEC. Some other examples is if you cash your policy out. If you do so, and there's a gain on the cash value, the gains are taxable. Or if the policy lapses due to a large loan outstanding, the gains are also taxable. But with that said, no need to worry as these are very easy to prevent. And even if they do happen, they're easy to reverse provided we catch it within 30 business days and we always catch it the next day because the large mutual companies have a fantastic monitoring systems. So that covers the main benefits let's progress on to how to maximize the cash value. So this comes down to setting up a policy the right way. To illustrate this, let's pretend that we are going to have a race from point A to point B. It's you, me, and one other person, say it's your best friend. And during that race, we've got to go up a mountain. A mountain. It's paved, cars go up this mountain, but it is steep and it is long. So you've got one of three options to choose for this race. Option one, a bicycle. Option two, an e-bike. If you ever rode one of those, you know it is much, much easier to get up a hill, hill with one of those. I do have one of those. Or option three, my personal favorite, a supercharged Jaguar. Who's gonna win the race? Yeah, it's like no contest. The supercharged Jag. Well, when it comes to setting up a whole life insurance policy, it's almost the exact same thing. What we want to look for when setting a policy up is a product that will give us the most cash value. And what this means, just to emphasize this point, is we want maximum cash value up front and also maximum cash value long term. So that supercharged JAG gets us off the start line faster, way faster than the two bicycles, and then we cross the finish line way, way earlier and with the least amount of effort. So here's what to look for when you're looking at a whole life insurance policy, where again, maximum cash value is your goal. First and foremost, focus on your cash value. Always remember that this is your money, not the agent or the insurance company. It's your money. If you feel like you're asking questions and you feel like you're annoying the agent, a lot of times people are concerned about this, please don't be. It, again, it's your money going into a policy. You wanna have confidence that things are set up right rather than just move forward with the policy and find out after the fact that it wasn't done right. That's where people often have buyer's remorse. So next we're gonna look at three examples and all three examples display the exact same product with the exact same insurance company they're just set up differently. We'll look at a traditional policy, then a blended policy, 
and then a maximum cash value policy. Let's first look at the traditional policy, and this would be the bicycle. You ever go uphill on a bicycle? It's not that easy. So what do we see here? A lot of columns, I'll walk you through this. First, look at what we've got in red on the far left. What do you notice here? Base premium. How much are you paying every year? This is for a 40 year old individual. He's paying $100,000 per year for 10 years. If we look at the next column, we've got our total funding, then we've got our cash value, then death benefit, and then the cash value gain. So all of his money is directed toward the base premium in this example. If this is you, what's your first year cash value? 3,500 bucks. When you get your money back, I'll give you a hint, it's highlighted in yellow. That's year 11. And what I mean when I say get your money back is that you've paid a total of $1 million into this policy and this is the first year you have more than what you've paid in. And you can actually see that to the far right with the cash value gain, where you're in the red for the first 10 years. What that means is that you have less in cash value than what you've paid into the product. Do you feel like that's a good option? A lot of times people don't. Before we progress on to the next option, take note of your year 20 cash value. What do you see down here, right below me? <laughs> a little over $650,000 in cash value. Okay, let's progress on to option B, which would be your e-bike. So we've got even more columns here, but I'll walk you through. Base premium, instead of $100,000, it's $36,000. However, to the right, you see your PUA rider, $64,000. If you add those two together, this is your total out of pocket of $100,000. PUA stands for paid up additions. I like to refer to this as a cash dump in because it accelerates the cash value growth. I see the bulk of these payments show up in cash value immediately. They begin compounding, I can access it. This is the key to maximizing the cash value in a whole life insurance policy. So here, we've got a low premium compared to the last example. If we look at your cash value in the first year, way more attractive than the last one, isn't it? Yeah, 63, almost $64,000 instead of 3,500 bucks or whatever it was. If we look at your break even point, which is highlighted in yellow, that's the first year you get all of your money back to year six instead of year 11. And if we look at year 20, what's your cash value gain? Almost $770,000. And by the way, where that gain comes from is if you look at your total funding, it's $1 million, that's your total out of pocket. Your cash value is $1,767,000. Everything above what you've paid is your gain. So which option's better, A or B? B, the e-bike will help you get off the line faster and cross the line earlier than the regular bicycle. But what about option C? The supercharged Jag. I hope you like Jaguars. So when we look at this guy, what do we see? Base premium, $9,000. Then we have another term here. It's called a term rider. This is a term insurance rider for 1,000. And then a PUA rider, that cash dump in for 90,000, add those together, your annual funding net out of pocket is $100,000 per year. Quick side note on this before we look at the values. With this type of setup, what you would be committed to would be the premium and the term insurance rider. So literally, you could commit to $10,000 per year and then add additional PUAs at your discretion without even, be, even being required to hit hundred k per year. This is very common as you'll see people attracted to whole life insurance for the benefits, but they don't want to be committed or locked into a big bill. So this is a nice way to make it very, very flexible. But if we keep the out of pocket the same as it has been in all of the examples, 100K going in, look at your first year cash value, just about $88,000. Look at when you get your money back between years three and four. Look at the year 20 cash value you've got a gain of almost $1 million there. So how's that compared to the other two examples? Do we see a difference? We do. So as we look at the difference, differences here, 
In all three examples, we have the same policy, just set up differently. You paid 100K per year for 10 years. That's a total out of pocket of $1 million. The traditional policy, you can look at the values. If we just look at the year 20 cash value, there you go, 1.6 million and change. The blended policy, 1.7 million and change. The gain would be the 767. And then the high cash value policy or maximum cash value policy, there you go, almost $2 million in total cash value. So setting it up properly will give you much, much greater cash value short term and long term. And that was all based on the non-guaranteed values. If you look at the guaranteed values, the high cash value design is often amplified even more, meaning we see greater gains compared to the examples to the left. So that covered how to maximize your cash value. Number three, how to use it. Here's the fun part. So how can you use your cash value? And up top, we've got business owners and real estate investors. So when we look at business owners and real estate investors, or what I should say is our company works heavily with business owners and real estate investors. They're attracted to using the policy to enhance their real estate portfolio or their business. So what you'll notice with a life insurance policy is that once a dollar passes through the cash value of your policy, it's always compounding forever. So if you take a loan, your entire asset continues to appreciate. Does that remind you of anything? How about real estate? So with real estate, that's going to continue to appreciate at the exact same rate, regardless if you have a loan outstanding or not. So let's go through a quick exercise here. Pretend that you own, own a home and it appreciates by 5% every single year like clockwork. And today it's worth a million bucks. You see an opportunity and you want to borrow half a million dollars against your property, you've got half a million dollars remaining in equity. Now that $500,000 loan you took, you pay interest to who? To the bank. Here's the question. Do you continue to receive that 5% depreciation on the entire property value, the full 1 million, or only the remaining equity? It's the entire property. For example, if you list your home, it's going to list for the fair market value. It doesn't matter if you have a mortgage against it or not. What you'll find with a cash value life insurance policy is that it works almost in the exact same way. So let's go through a quick exercise. We'll start up top in green. Let's pretend you've got $100,000 in cash value. We'll assume that the net growth rate is 5%. You take a policy loan of $50,000. We'll assume the loan interest rate is 5%. That is interest that goes to the insurance company. You've got remaining equity of $50,000. We'll call remaining equity cash value that you have not borrowed in the policy. You continue to receive 5% on the entire cash value of $100,000. So your entire asset continues to compound for you. Now, how this works for the insurance company is that they, one, collateralize your death benefit that's collateralized by the amount of the loan. And then two, they do charge interest for the loan. Want to see an example? All right, let's have some fun. So here we go. On the left, start here with me. We've got an example that assumes you just pay money into the policy and let it sit and grow. And this is a policy where he funds it only for five years. What I want to look at is the year five cash value, just about 508, and the death benefit is $1.8 million. Then we've got that column, annual compounding, that shows how much you're, you are receiving from the insurance company year over year. Now, progress with me to the, far, to the far right, then look here, same policy, look at year five, cash value, just about 508, death benefit, 1.8. Look at the annual loan column, and this is in year six, $300,000 taken. When you borrow that $300,000, what happens to your cash value? It drops by about $300,000. The exact amount it drops by, in this example, is $300,000 plus the loan interest for the next year. If you look at the death benefit, how much does that drop by? $300,000. So. What we've got here is the illustration with the loans to the right 
and then the same policy with no loans to the left. So in this example, in purple, we see interest payment. This assumes you're paying the interest out of pocket each year and then applying $30,000 per year toward the loan principal. Here's what I want to focus on. So we'll finish down here. In the example where you just let it sit and grow, your cash value is what? $794 and your death benefit is $1.8 million. To the right, what's your value? $794 in cash value, actually. Let me get my big head out of the way. $794 in cash value and $1.8 million in death benefit. Everything is 100% restored to exactly what it would have been as if you never touched it in the first place. So you continue to compound even though you've accessed money through a policy loan. Now we do want to account for the loan interest as that is a cost. However, what we can look at here is what's my loan interest cost and just compare it year over year to what the policy is compounding by. And in this specific example, the compounding is outpacing the loan interest. That's what we want. And if you're ever in a situation where that's not the case, we would definitely let you know because that's, that's very important. People are concerned about that because it is their money we're dealing with here. So let's continue on. Another way that you can access uh, or use the cash value in your policy is in retirement. A lot of people are interested in this, and this really has to do with taking income on a tax-free basis. So with a life insurance policy, you can take income, it's based on your cash value, and it's very similar to taking loans, but you're just not paying them back. You'll actually see there's a combination. You can take out withdrawals and loans. We'll look at an example in a second. But when you take money, what you'll see happen to your policy is your death benefit is going to be reduced. Your cash value will drop too. And I'll add that this is a popular strategy for individuals that are looking to supplement their income on a tax-free basis in retirement. We'll see this among individuals and it's very popular with corporations when they're taking policies out on executives and employees, something that they've done for a long time. So really individuals, when we set up policies for them for retirement income, we're just copying the same model we use for corporations. So the tax-free benefit, what I'll mention about that, that last bullet point, is a lot of people really, really like that because it alleviates the concern of rising tax brackets, which are outside of our control. If tax brackets go up or down, we have zero control over that. If we've got a tax-free asset that can supplement, supplement income from other assets, that we're in control of. That's what people are attracted to. So here's a quick example. And a quick side note here, what you'll notice is this illustration starts in year 20. So in the first four, in the first 20 years, he's paid a total of $1.5 million. It was over seven years in this example. And then starting at age 65, he's going to pull $150,000 per year in income. So here we see the total payments highlighted in yellow, 1.5 million. That's how much he paid in. The next year, he pulls out 150. Your total payments are now 1.35. The reason why is because he paid 1.5 initially, and what we're looking at when he pulls money out is how much he's getting back. And at this point in time, age 74, he's gotten his full $1.5 million back. However, he's got a lot of cash value left, he continues to pull income of 150 per year, and he received an additional $3 million. So he's taken a total of $4.5 million out if we look at the 150K per year during this life, life cycle here. And at 94, he still have, has over half a million dollars remaining in cash value, which is pretty cool. So this is a popular strategy we see when people are taking income from their policies. And that covers the last bullet point. So to wrap everything up, let me ask a few questions. Now that you've learned about cash value life insurance, do you see what the main benefits are? That it's a safe, liquid, and tax-free area to put money. That's number one. Number two, do you see how you can maximize the cash value of a whole life insurance policy? Meaning, do you know how to make sure you're putting that supercharged Jaguar instead of a bicycle when you're racing up a mountain? <laughs> and then number three, do you know, do you see how you can use the cash value in a whole life insurance policy? 
specifically through policy loans, and then also tax-free retirement income. So next, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to email them to us. Uh, if you can't think of any questions right now, feel free to pause here and uh, the questions below may help uh, get the uh, brain juices flowing a bit as these are a lot of questions or commonly asked questions we, we receive. And if you are interested in a whole life insurance policy, here are the next steps. So step number one, is to schedule an initial call to discuss a whole life insurance policy for you. And during that first call, what we'll do, what we'll do with you is really discuss your goals and answer any questions you might have, and then help you choose the right insurance company and product that is best for you. Now for this, we will need some information. The main item we need is how much money, which what I mean when I say that is how much would you like to deposit or how much would you like to fund a policy with? If you have that in mind, that's great. If not, we can help you come to a number that might make sense for you and show you different samples as well. Here's a couple of examples of how people often approach a whole life insurance policy. One might say, I've got a lump sum of money in a bank, in the bank. I just want to know the best way to get that into a life insurance policy. Or I'd like to deposit 100K per year but I don't want to bill for 100K per year. So we'll set this up where they're only committed to $10,000 per year and they can add the rest at their discretion, kind of like the Jaguar example. Or three, I want to deposit $1,000 per month and then be able to add more money at my discretion. So step one is to schedule an initial call and hopefully that gave you a little bit of uh, information as to what we'll discuss and what we'll need from you. Two. After your call, we'll schedule a follow-up meeting to review your illustrations. And what I'll say here is if you already know what you want, you're saying, I know exactly what I want to do. I've got an idea of what company I'd like to see. You can let us know. The best way to get in contact with us uh, is by visiting our website or emailing us at the address you see below. And you can certainly step the, skip the first step if you've done a lot of research and you feel you're there already. We'll still ask questions during that second call, but you can definitely do that. And then three, before, the meet, before we have our meeting to review the illustrations, uh, we do have a video that we will uh, ask that you watch. And we can watch that with you. If you're able to watch it on your own, we can send it to you. That really provides information, more detail on whole life insurance. We go through some specific case studies of people that have worked with us. You learn a little bit more about our company and how we work with you. Really, you can see if getting a whole life insurance policy with our company is a fit for you because we really view it as a, a, a long-term partnership because we're helping you with this policy indefinitely. So with that said, that's all I have. I appreciate you so much staying with me all the way until the end and bye for now. Thank you again.